to Don't Do Disney Without Us. My name is Daniel. And my name is Zach. And welcome back to our show. It's a little show where we like to talk about all things Disney, including the theme parks, the movies, the television networks, the streaming services, the sports. No, not the sports. Kind of. (laughs) Sometimes. Uh, Unless it's Ron Disney, in which case, yeah, occasionally we do talk about Ron Disney. Anyway, uh, pretty much everything that... uh, involves Disney we like to talk about. You would think by now we'd have a standard version of this opening, but I don't think we ever go through the list in the same way twice. No, <laughs> because then it wouldn't feel as, you know, conversational, I guess. I don't know. I, Authentic? Yeah, I don't know. Um, regardless, welcome. Thank you for joining us, and we do appreciate it. This is episode 13, 13, 13. Unlucky 13. Right here at the start of the Halloween season. Not, not for normal people, but... <laughs> For, for theme park people, the Halloween season started in August. For yeah, for those of us in the theme park uh, world, yeah, we pretty much uh, started uh, anticipating Halloween in the summer, uh, which it still in the middle of the summer feels even. like the summer here. Uh, so we want to talk today a little bit uh, about a few things. Number one, uh, this is a segment that uh, Zach is lovingly calling armchair imagineering, and I'll let you. Uh, talk about talk into the uh, the microphone there. <laughs> I know how to work the, a microphone. Where's the screensaver? Language? I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, in case you uh, have been living under a rock, the middle of Epcot is a giant construction crater. Yes, and they're slowly making their way into turning that giant construction crater into things. There's going to be the the festival center, the flower garden in the middle that with the Epcot logo there's going to be that new dreamers point with the Walt statue yes. and there's going to be that you know thing that everyone said they wanted from Epcot said they loved about past Epcot and is now returning to Epcot and hasn't ever really completely left Epcot figment well he's there <laughs> he just needs a refurb really badly Disney please okay um you're talking about... I'm talking about edutainment ah, in the form of Journey of Water inspired by Moana, which is really, really long for an attraction name. I don't know why we needed to throw the inspired by Moana in there when there's the giant Tafiti, but whatever. I don't care. What, why are you... What do you sound mad about? I mean, was there a reason for Jiminy Cricket to sing me songs about safety when I was in the second grade? No. But <laughs> I'm no fool, no siree. I'm going to live to be 103. I play safe for you and me because I'm no... Anyone? Anyone? Did you Did you have the Jiminy Cricket movies? No. That were played in, in grade school? No, for I I had Schoolhouse Rock, which at, in the, at the time I was in school was yeah. dated. Uh, uh, anyway, so Armchair Imagineering. Yes, so Disney announced last week, yes. late, late, late last week, early this sure, week, sure. Um, that they put out a, a thread on probably threads as well, but I saw it on X, formerly Twitter, mm-hmm. um, where they have cast member previews going on, and there was a little preview video of Journey of Water, and one of our good theme park friends, Dirk Libby, over at Cinema Blend, had retweeted, reposted, I'm... <sighs> I, 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 I can't he posted. get the, it's fine. Yes, it's fine. I, I can't it's fine. get the terminology sometimes. It's fine. Um, he had reposted the Disney Parks uh, post, basically coming down on everyone who says that this took too long to build. Um, yes. And when you look at the replies to Disney's original post, mm-hmm. there's a fairly good mix of between people who are really happy about it and people who are really disappointed in it and people who think that, yes, it took too long. But isn't that the internet? Isn't the internet now just company making statement A and then a bunch of people saying, I hate statement A. And uh, the people that like it go, oh, you're being too hard. I like it. But I feel like that's just the thing, right? Isn't that the culture that we live in nowadays is uh, people post, companies post things on social media and a bunch of people attack it. 
No matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, Wendy's is going to be giving away free French fries on Tuesdays from now on. Well, <laughs> that's because they own Big Potato and they're trying to push uh, their potato agenda on us. It's like there's always someone that's going to hate on something. How oh, yes. can you, it's, it's, how can, let me ask you this. How can you hate a new attraction? It's new. It's a new attraction. It's something new at Epcot. No, no, no. You see, it took too long to build, and it's just a glorified queue, and oh, uh-huh. it's just some fountains that you wave at, and oh my God, it's Moana. Moana doesn't fit into Epcot. You I, mean ip Yeah, I feel... But but the, the, the point that Dirk was making was that y'all say this took too long, like you, there wasn't a global pandemic in the middle of this yeah. that screwed everything up also, and and before any of you come at me with but universal's building a whole goddamn theme park i don't care wow look at that <laughs> universal and disney run on two different schedules they might use some of the same contractors but yeah. any any people saying this took too long mm-hmm. a don't know how large companies work and b don't That's know how right. project management works um, I would just like to add to that. It's not like you can just go down to Home Depot and buy these parts off the shelf. Like, it's, it's not like you have spitting, jumping water fountains, you know, in aisle H at your local Lowe's. These are custom made, uh, electro, you know, electronic devices that shoot water in different ways and they have to work 365 days a year for, you know, 12 hours a day. So they, they have to have heavy use. So they have to be industrially built to withstand people touching them all day long, all the time. Uh, these are not things you can just go and pick up on your, right, at your the, local the, hardware the, store. The, the, the amount of plumbing and plumbing-related tasks and things that went into this. Yeah. I mean, the, it might look simple, but right. it looks simple because it's supposed to look simple. I mean, it, it, I f- it it's a walk-through attraction. I feel like if you really, really are upset about this... I will set up my backyard for a Moana journey of water preview. Uh, and it will be for five bucks for five bucks. You can come and see it. Uh, it's open immediately. You have to make an advanced reservation. I'm sorry. Uh, let me know. It's basically just me in a grass skirt with a garden hose spraying you in the face as you walk through my backyard, but it's the journey of water from the garden hose to your face. That's really important. So uh, yes, and and lest we forget, this is not just a Moana walkthrough attraction. There's also the education angle where it's going to teach children yeah. who this attraction is largely designed for. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, adults, not everything is for you. Right. Um, about the water cycle. Who's talking with their hands tonight? It's not me. It's, <laughs> you're over here just like uh, gesticulating wildly, very upset about this. <laughs> I, I just. Did it take four years to build? Yeah. Yes. But there was a pandemic in there. Doesn't even matter. And let, let's let all remember that Disney does tend to build things really slowly, at least here lately, I feel. What, your, your choices uh, but, are, but your choices are you can rush it and you'll end up in a situation like Hagrid's where people stand in line for 12 hours over the first few days of trying to write and it... The, it keeps breaking down because it hasn't been properly tested. So it's you can have a, a partially functioning attraction and a lot of angry guests that have been standing around for 14 hours. Or you can tell people to wait until you're ready that it, you know you're sure that it's ready. And yes, Disney rides do break down just like everything else because mm-hmm. again they operate 365 days a year with constant use. But I feel like no one has ever stood in line at Disney for 12 hours and then not been able to ride the ride. Like that's, I've never, maybe an hour or two, but never 12 hours. That that was, that whole Hagrid's thing was crazy. And and the attraction adds something that we just watched the, the offhand Disney video about this, adds more kinetic energy to the park with yeah. the movement of the water. Uh, I mean, you could argue the movement of the guests, but right. the, the movement of the water and makes the park feel more alive and it adds more greenery. Um, I had said that it adds shade in one of my (laughs) hastily written, not that kind of shade, um, in one of my hastily written replies. And uh, it may add a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's adding a ton. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I've actually dodged most of the preview footage and images of this because I want to see it for myself when it opens. I don't want to walk into it being like, oh, I've already seen Influencer A walk through the attraction. I, I just I want to experience it for myself. And the park needs more things to do and places to cool off. Epcot just largely needs a bubble shade. built over it with a retractable shade, but... Since we can't do that. Next time you're in Epcot, pay attention, especially on a, a bright sunny day. Pay attention as you uh, scale the the arid peaks of Mount Epcot. Um, that That's the bridge between... The UK in, and France. UK and France. Uh, there is a section there heading towards the World Gateway back entrance slash whatever side entrance of Epcot. The International Gateway. Yeah. There's a section there at the top of the hill that... There's a huge tree that shades, and it's like all the photo pass people all stand under that <laughs> shade. It's like it's the only shade in Epcot is that one tree uh, over at Mount Epcot. That that's pretty much it. Um, anyway, all right. So yeah, it's just it's exhausting because everyone on the internet, especially in the theme park community, mm-hmm. thinks they can build the ride or the attraction right. or well, the I mean, park but, better uh, than right. Disney. I feel like all right. Take a deep breath. I'm. It's fine. There's going to be people. <sighs> There's nothing that you can do. No, I can or just get say, angry and I, I can't change anyone's mind. But let me finish. There's nothing you can do or say that people are not going someone somewhere is going to hate. Someone somewhere is going to dislike. It's just it's just and it's it, opinions are like, you know, bee holes. Everyone's got one and they don't always smell great. So just, you know, all right, great. I'm sorry that you feel cheated that you had to wait four years for this attraction, but you know, maybe let it open first before you decide that that was that's, too long. That's the other thing too. Everyone's saying all this without actually having been to the attraction themselves. So if you've gone to it and then you dislike it, feel free to have that opinion. Stop judging things before they're released. All right. Well, let's move on to judging something else. Uh, okay. It is the Halloween season as we have uh, alluded to yes, earlier. Yes, it is officially spooky season. Mm-hmm. And uh, for everywhere except Legoland, because theirs doesn't start until September 15th or so. Uh, Every one of the theme parks in Florida has some form of Halloween offering. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights over at Universal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party at Magic Kingdom at Disney. Hallow Scream at both SeaWorld and Busch Gardens in Tampa Bay. Because they're owned by the same company. Uh, Cedar's Fair, right? Um, And Brick or Treat, that's Brick or Treat, like a Lego brick, Brick or Treat, uh, for Legoland. That's actually a really cute name. It is a cute name. (laughs) I think they're all cute names. Uh, Hallow Scream, Brick or Treat, uh, you know, that's kind of like that thing that we used to do at our old company that we used to work for, Trunk or Treat, where you would bring your kid, and the kids would come after school to the parking lot Mm -hmm. of our, you know, and you would have candy in your trunk and you'd decorate your trunk and stuff. Um, Yeah, there's cute names and everything, but here's my problem. I look at the Oogie Boogie Bash, which happens at Disneyland in California, actually happens at California Adventure in in, in California, and that's the event that I want, right? That, it seems to me that the only events we have here in Florida are either exclusively aimed towards kids, Mickey's Not So Scary, and Brick or Treat. These are definitely kid-centered, you know, dress your kids up in costumes, take them around and let them get candy from the non-scary people because it's 2023 and we're all scared of our neighbors. So, you know, we'll take them to a theme park so that they can get (laughs) corporately sponsored candy, right? That's, it's one of those things. And, you know, they have the DJs and bands, but it's going to be kid stuff. It's going to be very, very family-friendly, very, uh, you know, I don't, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, just as as it is in the name, not scary. Yeah. Um, Or you have the opposite extreme, which are the Hallow Scream and the Halloween Horror Nights, which basically involve going around in a park, pumping a whole bunch of smoke everywhere so that they can hide people dressed up in horrifying costumes and really loud fake chainsaws jumping out at you to get you to pee in your pants. It's like, it's one of those things. And and, and also haunted houses themed around... uh, People jumping out and making you pee in your pants. I was going to say popular horror or supernatural properties, but... But even so, those haunted houses all revolve around... 
people scaring you. That's the that's right. the the main gist of it is. And for people like myself who don't like to be scared, also me. Um, where's my event? Where like I feel like we need one of the two hundred theme parks here in Florida should step up and give us an adult non scare version of a Halloween party. Uh, Basically, like, we wanted to go to Oogie Boogie Bash, but we couldn't get tickets. So even, even can we so, bring Oogie Boogie Bash to this, even so, this even, coast? Where is the where is the equivalent of that event here in Florida? I want a place where it serves alcohol and there's not kids there. So I want it to be, you know, an evening event where there's not going to be kids. It's an adult event with, uh, you know, beverages, adult beverages. I'm pretty uh, sure there's kids allowed at Oogie Boogie. I'm just saying it's not focused towards kids. Okay. It, and, and there's uh, character interactions, which are definitely, from what I've seen on YouTube, those are very adult interactions with the characters playing little word games with you and, and being villainous with you and whatnot. And it's definitely not, you know, aimed at a second grader or whatever. It's it's an adult conversation conversation that you're having with these characters and it it's fun. it seems like it's a, it's a really fun event mm-hmm. centered around halloween which is a really fun time of the year um but it's like we, we need halloween just to become about scaring it's just like uh we're doing this 5k in claremont florida that has scare zones in it it's like uh like, i'm already <laughs> running you don't need to encourage me <laughs> you don't need me to run faster do you uh anyway that's that's what i wanted to say about halloween i, I just feel like there's every everyone has a halloween party or a halloween event but i have yet to find one in florida that is the kind of event that i would want to go to right right so and maybe i'm in that well clearly i'm in the minority right uh, a lot of people love halloween horror nights they love getting scared and they go um, 10,000 times every season right and that's and that's great i mean that's that's wonderful. If, if if that if that is your thing, yeah. more power to you. Yeah, we go to H two O Glow Nights at Typhoon Lagoon, and that's a nighttime event that we go to there, and I love it. I, I love we've gone every year, uh, and that's one of those fun things that we've gone to, right? So, and we'll continue to go to because that's a fun event. I just wish that there was a Halloween event that was fun. That's all I had to say. Uh, basically, I was just complaining about that. Uh, I really wanted to go to Oogie Boogie Bash. I'm really kind of sad that. We're not going to get to go do that. I mean, we didn't even try for tickets, so. <laughs> it, I mean, by the time we talked about it, the they were done. They were yeah. they sold out in a day. And, that and yeah. well, they sold out in a few hours, and then Disney realized, oh crap, we put three ticket, three events worth of tickets on sale on the Disneyland servers, mm-hmm. and they can't even handle one. So let's try this again in a couple weeks, and then they sold out in a day. It but was yes. it was it was a mess, and yeah. the boys are not yet ready to be schlepped off somewhere for a few days so i'm talking about our cats yes, yes we don't have we would have to have someone come and babysit the cats but that's fine that these are all solvable these, these are solvable yeah. problems yes uh anyway let's talk about uh finally let's wrap this up here let's talk about destination d23 so every other year disney does a big uh event out in california called d23 it's usually held at the anaheim convention center uh big huge thing with a bunch of panels uh telling you all about the new things at disney uh both the the parks and the movie theaters and studios you know all everything disney a big d23 fan club uh is what it is but uh starting i don't know about a decade ago maybe not even that long they decided to do an east coast version on the alternate year so uh you know since it's every other year in California, the off years, they do an event called Destination D23 here at Walt Disney World in Florida. And that is happening next weekend, September 8th, I want to say, 8th through the 10th. Is that, am I right on that? Uh, 8th is Friday, 10th is Sunday. Yeah, so uh, September 8th through the 10th, uh, here at Walt Disney World, they will be doing the Destination D23, long since sold out, so don't try to find tickets for that. However, they are live streaming uh, several of the panels, yeah. uh, so check the Disney Parks X account or Threads account, and they should have links to where they're live streaming, uh, probably on YouTube, and uh, probably the Disney Parks YouTube, to be oh, specific. Is it going to be like their fireworks live stream, and they're <laughs> going to switch between camera angles every 30 seconds? Because if so, I'm not watching it. No. Uh, however, uh, I wanted to know from you, Zach, uh, there is both a Parks panel on Saturday morning, the 9th, and an Epcot panel on the afternoon of Saturday, September 9th. Mm-hmm. I wanted to know from you, what, what if anything, do you think is going to be announced at the Parks panel here at Destination D23 next weekend in Orlando? I mean, in Walt Disney World. 
I'm gonna say yes. Opening dates for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Okay. Opening date for Moana. Okay, in the Epcot panel. Yes. Obviously. Yeah. Um. More information slash opening date for the hundredth anniversary fireworks show at Epcot that we still know absolutely nothing about. All that construction out in the World mm-hmm. Showcase Lagoon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Potentially some expansion on the blue sky concept of beyond big thunder mountain that they talked about at d23 if you're listening on headphones and i'm unable to take out that noise it's zach is holding his microphone cable in his hand (laughs) and playing with it and it is trans i'm fidgeting but (laughs) i don't maybe maybe some information on the retheme of dino land Ah, maybe I, I I do not think we are going to get any big earth shattering announcements about new attractions or projects that aren't already in motion. We might, might, they might touch on some things that were in the Epcot plans that were potentially canceled slash Mm -hmm. shelved indefinitely like the spaceship earth retheme and rework and the Mary Poppins ride mm-hmm. mary poppins who I, I think that's what they're gonna do with that it's right like, huh what what are you talking but about but i've never I, heard of mary I, poppins. I feel like both of those are probably gone for good <laughs> yeah. but disney very rarely officially says that something has been officially canceled right. um but yeah i don't think we're gonna get anything big and honestly i don't think we need to disney disney does not need to combat epic universe Okay, so we talked about this in a podcast a while back, but yes, that is our belief is uh, if you look historically every single time that a new theme park has opened in Florida, which we've we've had many. Right. And, and not imagine. even necessarily a new theme park, just a new theme park land. Okay, but specifically when new theme parks open, Islands of Adventure open, when Universal Studios open, uh, when Animal Kingdom open, when Hollywood Studios open, uh, when Legoland open for that matter. If you go and look historically at the attendance letter uh, numbers that are published every year, Every year that a new theme park has opened in Florida, everyone's attendance has gone up. Uh, that is just that's just numbers. You can go and look at that; is not, nothing's hidden there. It's like uh, Islands of Adventure opens, Disney's attendance goes up that year. So does Universal's, uh, and it's the quite literal embodiment of a rising tide lifts all boats. People are flying and traveling here to Central Florida to go to theme parks. Of course, they're going to go to other ones because. The, the big expense for a lot of them is getting here in the first mm-hmm. place, right? So once you're here, yeah, it's it seems silly not to go ahead and get those things. Right. Uh, Universal you know, and yeah. Disney are what, a 30-minute drive from right. each other? Exactly. So uh, I don't think that Disney needs to do anything for Epic Universe. That's you know, So let's just take that out of the equation, whatever. I am hoping uh, that there are some announcements for the parks, specifically because Destination D23 being held at Walt Disney World instead of someplace off-site, like the Anaheim Convention Center. Right. It's, it, it's, it's in the conference center at the Contemporary. Right. The majority of people that are going to go to Destination D23 are parks people. Right. They're going here to the Walt Disney World Park, uh, or parks, and they want to know about parks. So I'm hoping that there will be some announcements at the parks panels. I don't expect anything new, but what I do kind of hope for is a clarification of the Beyond Big Thunder Mountain, the the blue sky artwork that they presented at D23 last year. Just more clarification on that. Not dates so much as just, you know, more solid right ideas of like, what's hey, coming there. We gave you all these things. Yeah. Here's what we're leaning more right. towards. Yeah. Uh and uh, the play pavilion they haven't really canceled the play pavilion. We know that the the old Wonders of Life pavilion is still there. Uh, unlike the Mary Poppins thing that never really existed, they would have to build that. You know, Wonders of Life pavilion is there. Right, so, they haven't you know, torn it down. So they could do something with it. Um, I expect we'll, we'll hear some announcement about that. Uh, and uh, about a definite opening date for Moana. Cause uh, I know some people were upset that it just said late in 2023 is the opening date. I feel like, well, you've got a, a, a destination D 23 in I, early I, September. It, you might as well. I, I yeah. think if we don't get the date for it with a whole yeah. month of cast member previews going yeah. on. Yeah. 
then something major happened. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's going to open in October. Probably that, October 1st that to, start of, the, to start the fiscal yeah, year. <laughs> that kind of is late 2023, if, if you want to put it yeah. that way. They're just giving themselves some wiggle room in case they need to. Right. Uh, but I feel like, yeah, probably that is, from everything I've heard, these cast member previews have been going well. There's not really been any complaints about this, so I feel like it's probably ready to, to be opened. Uh, and I've, I've so seen a lot of people, mm-hmm. uh, DFB... Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple other major influencers slash media channels post things that feel like they've been on walkthroughs. I don't know if maybe they were yeah. cast members plus ones. Yeah, I think that's what uh, it is, exactly. Yeah. But so, yeah, I mean, yeah. Th- they're letting non-cast member guests go in. There, it's cast member plus one just like it was for Tron. That's right. how a lot of the influencers got on to Tron during the cast member previews. But anyway, I, I don't expect anything brand new and everything. However... I kind of secretly hope that there is something like some little Walt Disney World gem uh, thing. Maybe, maybe has to do with the hotel. Maybe an opening date for the Polynesian DVC. Uh, something, uh, you know, just just for us folks here to go like, hey, this is on the horizon. This I, I thought of something that I want, but probably won't happen. What? And it doesn't even matter because I'll never ride the ride. Uh, an announcement that they are in fact retheming Rock and Roller Coaster to ah. the Muppets with uh, Electric Mayhem. Wow! Look at you. So you want the Rock and Roller Coaster, the Aerosmith uh, thing that was recorded in the nineties, eighties, nineties? A long time ago, <laughs> when Aerosmith was actually relevant. They actually weren't that relevant then either. I think they they had. It had been at least five or six years after their last real hit at that point, which is that theme from Armageddon, right? Um, but the, uh, yeah, I mean, Aerosmith, obviously, a legacy band that's been around forever. Everyone knows the name, even if you don't, you know, and you know an Aerosmith song. You've heard, right. it's Muzak at this point. You've heard an Aerosmith song. While walking uh, through Coles yeah. or Walmart. Or- yeah, you've heard Dude Looks Like a Lady on a string quartet while you've been in an elevator at your lawyer's office, something. I, I guarantee it. Um, however, yeah, it's a bit- Did old. you did you pick lawyer's office because we just finished The Good Wife tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I feel like, uh, um, yeah, it is stale. And it is- uh, and, and the parks need more Muppets. It, they do, and the great thing about Muppets, they don't age. Uh, the Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem will be look the same 20 years from now as they do today. Unlike Steven Tyler. And uh, they can come back and record new things because that's how Muppets work, right? There's, there's Muppeteers that bring them to life. And, uh, you know, even though Jim Henson died, Kermit and... Uh, uh, what Ernie uh, live on? I'm trying to think of Kermit something. and Ernie. What an odd to, combination! All right, I'm trying to think of, of of voices specifically that Jim Henson did. Okay, okay. <laughs> I wasn't trying. To, I wasn't trying to be cryptic there. So Jim Henson uh, did the voice of either Waldorf or Statler. I don't remember which. Uh, Frank Oz did the other, and um, obviously did the voice of Kermit and Ralph the dog. Uh, Ernie from Ernie and Bert. Uh, yeah, just they still live on, right? Because uh, it, you know. Anyway, let's wrap this all up when uh, put this to bed, this kind of rambling little episode here. If you have something that you're hoping to hear in the Parks panel, uh, leave it in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube uh, or send us an email if you're listening to us on uh, Spotify or you've gotten our podcast by any of the fine audio podcatchers that are out there. Uh, our email address is don't do Disney at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, let us know what you think is going to happen in the prediction panel. Uh, and one, we'll... Yeah. We'll definitely be doing, we'll, we will prop the, yes, the prediction panel. <laughs> I'm just saying words now. <laughs> Josh, uh, Josh tomorrow is going to come out and be like, look, this is what I think we're going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. we'll definitely be probably watching the, uh, the, oh, yeah, the definitely. streamed panels definitely. and probably have our reactionary thoughts. Uh, maybe see if any of our predictions actually come through probably on our next episode. And uh, apologies for the delay between episodes. There's been travel and there's been illness and yeah. it's just... It's also the summer and there's not yeah. a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so anyway... And we're not... We're, we're, we're not super plugged into the parks every day, so yeah. sometimes we're a little late to the news. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's end with our heroes and our villains of the week like we do every week. This is an odd episode, so we'll start with our villains first. Uh, I think you started last time, so I'll start this time. Sure, does that work? Um, Works for me. Uh, my villain of the week is a, a TikTok account called Illegal Disney. They are posting TikToks from 
behind you know, from backstage w- as character actors. So, uh, people that hang out with Chip and Dale or Mickey and Minnie and Pluto, uh, in their dressing areas back there, there, you're not allowed to take video. They're not only taking video, but posting it on TikTok. Uh, and I feel like, you know, you don't have a lot of control what's going to show up on your TikTok. I clearly love Disney, so it's going to show up because it's Disney stuff, but it's kind of, you know, I'm not a child and I don't, I don't have a child that would be upset if he saw, you know, Mickey's disembodied head sitting in a cage, but, uh, it's still, it's kind of, you know, we all know, we all know it's a person in a suit. We all, I promise you that we don't believe that's actually Mickey Mouse, but I would like to suspend my disbelief (laughs) and just let me have that. All right. The world is complicated. Let me have that. Just let me have it. All right. That is Pluto. Let me have it. Anyway, go ahead. And he's not going to wave at you because you'll be on the wrong side of the parade always. Pluto's always, <laughs> no matter which side of the parade route I get on, Pluto will be on the opposite. So mine is something that I'm supposed to not complain about since I live in Florida, but it's the weather mm-hmm. because we've been to the parks exactly once this summer. Yeah. And it was a water park with a night stop at Epcot yeah. because it's just been so damn hot. Yes. So... I need Mother Nature to quit doing what she's doing so we can go to the parks. I know I have set the date of October 1st. I will go back outside to run. We've been, I've been running on treadmill this summer. We've been running on the treadmill. (laughs) Um, But yeah, October 1st, come hell or high water, October 1st, back outside. Uh, Unless it's 95 degrees at 8 a.m. Nope. Still going to do it. Got to do it. Got to do it. Because we're running these races in Florida. We're not running them in an air conditioned living room. So I got to get back out there. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, my hero of the week is Disney for not for being all right. This is a, a really deep Florida thing. Uh, every year in Florida, when the first storm of the season starts heading towards uh, Florida, every company in Florida forgets everything they've ever learned about a hurricane over the past 200 years and overreacts. They always overreact to the first storm. Uh, all the stores sell out of bottled water and bread. It doesn't matter if it's just a tropical storm. It doesn't matter if it has no chance of hitting us. It's the first storm of the season. Everyone freaks out. And uh, it, it's like no one's ever been through a hurricane before. Uh, so my hero is Disney, who has always, one of the few corporations that always remembers that hurricanes are completely unpredictable. And they didn't. They didn't overreact. Right. They didn't shut down their theme parks on Monday. Like our office building was shut down on Monday when it was sunny and nice here uh, because there was going to be a tropical storm coming through on a Wednesday. Right. It's like that, that's the kind of overreaction that we're talking for. So, uh, yeah, kudos to Disney, my heroes. They're staying open. The only thing they shut down was Typhoon Lagoon on Wednesday when we had the actual tropical storm. Uh, you couldn't go to Typhoon Lagoon. Uh, but uh, Universal and Disney both stayed open for uh well, yeah. and I think some of that was the storm wasn't going anywhere near them. Yeah, uh, they are. They are in the center of the state. They are nowhere near the coast. So the the majority of the damage that happens from hurricanes is storm surge. And you know, if you're not on the coast, you you avoid that, right? So you 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 what is it? You run from the winds, and you no, you hide from the winds, and you run from the water because it's the water is the thing that does the real damage in hurricanes. Uh, anyway, what, who's your hero? Of the week? Uh, Just the Imagineers who are getting to see the fruits of their labor with Moana especially, but also, I mean, there's been some really uh, forward-moving work on Tiana's Bayou Adventure (laughs) and whatever else they have going on. Um, So good for them because much like everything else, even if you don't like it or it's not for you... Mm -hmm. All of these projects are made by people who put their hearts and souls and blood and sweat and tears into them and deserve to have their work appreciated and respected and not just trashed left and right. So, I mean, th- this that is literally someone's job you're looking at. So, uh, If you would like to send us an email, you can do so. Our email address is don'tdisney at gmail.com. You can reach to, out to us on any of the socials. Uh, the links for those are found uh, in the doobly-doo if you're watching this on YouTube or in the show notes if you're uh, listening to it on podcast. Our YouTube channel is WDW Aristocrats. There is a video version of this podcast there. Uh, 
And uh, if you are, are watching the YouTube video version of this, there's also an audio only version available on Spotify and wherever there are other fine podcasts. If you would like to listen to us talk about theme parks while you are running. That's right. You, then you on your treadmill do, because yeah, it's 110 degrees outside. Uh, I think Spotify also has the video they do. version. If you go to Spotify. Anyway, doesn't matter. All that is left for me to do is to ask, nay, 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 beg for you to please, please, please don't do Disney. Without us and our cat who's sitting right behind you. (laughs) 